now we are now at chapter four where we will deal with uh, BIM. Huh? We deal with BIM and we today are going to look at a little bit on the BIM stiffness matrix. Huh? And then we're going to, after that, uh, we're going to learn how to apply the equation. Huh? So previously, what we learned, we already uh, learned the difference between uh, spring, bar, and now we look at BIM. Huh? So BIM, we're having a vertical uh, forces at both ends that generate the moment and the uh, twisting angle or the rotation angle theta. Okay, so this is uh, the deformation of the form uh, in moment and the theta is the one that uh, beam have. Huh? The only the, the beam chapter will have. So you you cannot find you're not able to find the moment and angle uh, in a previous chapter. So this is the special thing. And previously, we derived one equation. And just take note, there's a typo error in the previous slides. So this is the typo error that I highlight in my slides. Huh? So uh, there's no negative there. Right? There's no negative there. There's a typo error. Because if you balance this equation, uh, you will get V equal to dm over dx. Okay, there's no negative there. All right, and why this one becomes zero? Because when we uh, take the limit of the equation approaching uh, dx equals zero, then this one will be very, very small and we can take out. All right. Same with the other slides that if you see the, uh, yes, this one, if you see the v and w, so there's a typo error in the equation also. So, okay, so I think I highlight the wrong one. It's a V, not the, it's a V, yeah? oops. It's a V, not the W. W1 is correct. Okay, it's a V, yeah? so let me save the slides. Okay, give me another five seconds. For the document to save. All right. So just take the equation inside this equation. Uh, inside these slides have a typo error. There's no negative there. Huh? Uh, v equal to positive. So that's why when you derive the equation for uh m m equal to eid square uh d double differential for uh, velocity uh, not velocity for the sh uh, vertical movement v over 2 right over 2 x uh, x square then you substitute all these uh, v and w definition inside there you will get ei d power 4 v divided by x power 4 okay so uh, do revisit the slides, right? If you don't understand this one. Huh? So all these are very important for when you in, uh, when you analyzing the beam, okay? So today we're gonna look at, look at how we derive the student matrix. There are seven steps, like what we learned in uh, chapter three or even chapter two, there are seven steps. So for step one, look at the element type and then you start labeling the point. Okay, like what we did in chapter two and chapter three. The first step, you look at the element, then you start labeling the point, point one, point two. And then there's a force for point one, F one Y, V one. You label the force for uh, force at number two, F two Y, V two. And there's a moment for beam. So label M one uh, for point one, uh, rotation angle theta or pi one, for point one, same with point number two. Okay, so this is the first step when you solve a beam problem. You label the point, look at the look at the structure, and uh, analyze how many uh, points that you need to solve. Okay, so this is the first one. All right. Once you have, then you go for displacement function. Okay, so displacement function is step number two you will assume that you're having a trans transverse displacement 
uh, from point one to point two. So you're going to go uh, and use the polynomial equation. So this is what you learn in your calculus uh, when you talk about polynomial. Okay. So uh, V is a vertical displacement or transverse displacement in the Y direction. So it's in terms of X. So as you move along X, there's a changes of your uh, vertical displacement. All right. V equal to A, uh, 1, X3, and so on. So this is a polynomial uh, format. Okay. So again, um, if you're not sure what is polynomial equation, uh, go and uh, read your calculus textbook eh? or go and find your uh, lecturer who teach you uh, advanced mathematics or um, or calculus eh? module. So go and ask uh, what is polynomial equation. Then once we have the general equation for uh, transverse displacement or vertical displacement for beam, all right, um, just a side note, so we will have a four degree of freedom or four unknown we need to solve. Okay, so what does it mean? What mean by four degree of freedom or four unknown? Four unknown or four parameter. Meaning if you look at point one, how many parameter is unsolved? Or uh, you have uh, F, V, theta or uh, moment one. Okay, one point you have four. Same, in this case you have two, so you have eight, uh, sorry, you have, uh, you have total have eight for this structure. All right, four degree of freedom for one point. Okay, one point you have four degree of freedom. Or you can imagine as point one, it can move up, it can move, uh, it can rotate at a certain degree and there's a force at that point. So these are, there are four, uh, okay, there are four, sorry, uh, there are four unknown. So in this case, uh, uh, four degree of freedom means the direction of movement. Sorry, I need to uh, explain what is uh, four degree of freedom. So four degree of freedom means uh, movement. You can imagine as movement. So you can see that you have V is moving up and there's a twisting rotation angle. Okay, there are two. These are the two movements that you can measure or you can uh, see in the a, in a experiment or in the real case. So this is the movement. Or degree of freedom. The force and moment is not considered movement, but it's a force and the uh, uh, reaction that you have in the structure. So in this case, you have four, mean that uh, point one, you have V1 and uh, theta one or pi one. Uh, point two, you also have another two, V2 and theta. So total, you have four. Okay, total, you have four uh, uh, degree of freedom or DOF. Okay, degree of freedom. All right. Okay, then the next one, we will displace, uh, we will express our equation. Again, recall this uh, general equation, F equal to KD. K is a bracket. D is a displacement. So we are going to look at displacement here, okay, the D. Okay, so in this, in the, in the diagram on the top right corner, you have two points. Each point have uh, each point have two movement. Each point have two movement, which is the theta and v. Same with uh, point number two, you have v two and theta two. So you have four. Okay. The next one you're going to use boundary condition to define this displace this polynomial equation, because in this uh, polynomial equation, v equal to a one x cube plus A2X square plus A3X plus A4, okay? Now, uh, how do you find A1, A2, A3, A4? In mathematics, 
you are using boundary condition. Okay, boundary condition. So in the ANSYS later on, you need to define your boundary condition, meaning at this point, what happened to the displacement, to the rotation, at this point, what happened to the uh, displacement and uh, the, the angle of rotation. So the first boundary condition, as you can see on your screen here, you're looking at x equal zero, meaning you start from, you, as you can see from the diagram here, your origin as, is at point one. Okay, origin of your axis, y and x. The origin is at point one. So at point one here, you can write x equals zero because the, the distance travel is zero uh, on the axis, or you can say as a raw origin. So when your x equals zero, you, x, you substitute x zero here, x zero here, x zero here. So cancel, cancel, cancel. At the end, at the point one, at point one, point one, your x equals zero. How you know x zero? Because from this diagram, huh? all right. So you, uh, you are having x uh, v1 equal to a4. All right. Now I want you, uh, I give you maybe uh, 30 seconds for each one of you to do calculation for what is, what is uh, A1, A2, A3, yeah? Okay. Now, once you find uh, the first location here, I'm going to ask uh, Ashmal. Ashmal, what happened if you have uh, at point number two? What is the next equation that you can derive at point number two here? Okay, Ashma, what is the parameter that uh, you can find when you are at point two? What is the equation <coughs> that you should write? Uh, v, v L L equal to mm -hmm. A one. Mm -hmm. L uh, cube. L cube plus. Plus A2. X square. L square. Mm -hmm. plus, plus A3. L. Plus A4. Okay. So this is uh, for point two. Huh? Okay, excellent. Uh, Ashma. All right. Anyone have question? How to... If you don't know how to get this equation that uh, Ashmal just uh, mentioned, any of you, 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 you have no idea what is Ashmal talking about. So you understand? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So the rest is just, uh, you repeat the same for point number two later. Huh? So we continue with point one. So we're going to differentiate uh, for point, um, uh, we're going to differentiate the equation at point one first. Point one x zero, you get a four, a four equal to v one. And uh, if you differentiate over x uh, at zero, you will get uh, uh, pi one or theta one. So this is the definition to get your rotation angle. What mean by rotation angle theta here or pi? One is uh, changes of your vertical displacement. How you define the changes of vertical displacement? You take V divided by X. Okay. So the, the, the changes over X, huh? dV over the X, you get your uh, rotation angle. Okay, rotation angle. Rotation at point one, because point one also x zero. So from here, when you do the differentiation, you will get what is a three. Okay, so uh, when you differentiate your uh, over the x, what, what does it mean? It means, um,
Okay. So what does it mean? It means if you differentiate this one, what happens if you differentiate dv in a function of x over dx? Chia, what, what is the differentiation of this equation? If you differentiate this equation to uh, over dx, what do you get? 2a1x squared mm -hmm. plus uh, 2a2x plus 2a2x plus a3 plus a3. Okay, correct. So you use this differentiation, you substitute x equals 0. I mean, you look at the point 1. You substitute x equals 0 inside here, 0, 0. So that's why you get a3 here. Okay, so I'm not showing this uh, calculation on the slides. It's just that uh, I expect you to know how to get a3. Okay, you need to differentiate this equation to get a3. All right. Clear, uh, all of you? Sue, Brian, able to understand, huh? Why certainly you can get a3 on the screen here? So there's a there's a mistake with the differentiation. What mistake? What mistake you see? It's, you put two ax to power three. Oh sorry, it's three, yeah. <laughs> Correct. All right, thank you, Brian. All right, so uh yeah, so uh excellent, huh, Brian? Thanks for pointing out. All right. Uh, any, any, any more, any more input from you guys? If not, I'm going to erase the marking. No, uh. All right. So then as, uh, I asked you a question just now for uh, point number two. Okay. This is, uh, at point one and we start looking at point two, point two, the X equal to L. So you substitute the X equal to L in this equation, polynomial equation, you will get a1, l3, and so on. This one, uh, I think, answered by Su just uh, answered by Chia just now, All right? So you do the same. You differentiate one more time, uh, dv over dx just now, and you substitute the x, uh, the x equal to l, uh, then you get rotation uh, angle for point number two, okay? So you will get 3x, uh, 3a1, l, 2 plus 2AL two plus A3. So this is just you substitute the X equal to L for point number 2. So you have four equations, 1, 2, 3, 4. So later, you're going to substitute all this in the, uh, for the derivation of the matrix later on. Okay. Stop me uh, if, if you're not able to, to understand what is this for. Uh. This four equation is, is based on the boundary condition. This is x equals 0 for point 1. This one, x equal to L, point 2. Next, you solve what is A and A4. You substitute into this one. So you can see that what, if you start substituting uh, into this one, so you know that your a4 equal to v1, you substitute this one in. You know that, uh, okay, a3 is pi1, so in here and so on. Okay, so you're going to get this lengthy equation, right? So vx equal to so on. So when you substitute all these, lah, all these inside here, okay, you find what is a1, from this four equation, you find what is a2, you find what is a3, and a4. So if, if you can see the equation on the right uh, corner here, there's no a, a1, a2, a3, a4, but you replace them with uh, this four equation in term of v, uh, rotation one, and l, and yeah, and rotation two. Okay. So here you have, and then you rearrange the equation, right? So you have this equation, uh, general equation for displacement. So this this one, this one become your displacement equation, or we call it function. 
Okay, we call it function. And this one is specifically for BIM. You, you didn't see these steps for uh, spring or, or bar or even truss. You don't see this one. But when you come to BIM, you have uh, this equation. All right. So yeah, this equation you can refer back later on. But uh, what is important, you understand how you get this equation. What is the logic behind? All right. Stop me uh, if you're not able to understand what is how you get this one. Uh, okay, let's move on. So I pull the equation to the left corner here. And then we express, we put this equation in the matrix form. Okay, so I think you already learned how to change the uh, equation into matrix form. So we're going to write in the matrix form of this one. Uh, v is a vertical displacement equal to n times d. So this is our d. Okay, this is our d. So we need to put uh, the n in terms of l. Uh, yeah, so we're going to see something like that. So your d is going to be v1 uh, pi 1. Uh, v2 pi 2. Uh. So when you write matrix, remember you write in set. Uh. So this is set 1, set 2, or point 1 and point 2 in sequence. Don't mix v1, v2, theta 1. Don't sort, do the sorting yourself like this. Uh. So this is the wrong arrangement. You arrange them based on the displacement. This is displacement. Okay, Displacement, you look at point. Point one set, point two one set, point one one set, point two one set. So the first matrix you can derive from here. Uh, you you your D is these four parameter, and the N here we call it shape function. Okay, N here there's a name for it. We name it shape function. So here because we have four point uh, four parameter here. So we will need N1, N2, N3, and N4. Okay, meaning you write this one in the matrix form and you do have four parameter inside the N matrix or the shape matrix. Yeah. So if you do the mathematics, I'm going to give you uh, this one as your homework. Huh? So you don't need to uh, pass it back to me. I just want you to go home and uh, try to understand uh, when you rewrite this equation in this form. I did give you the D. You only need to extract the information for N1, N2, N3, N4 from the above equation. The first N1, you'll get 1 over L cubed and so on. 2 power 3 minus 3 something. N2, right, you need to find all this. Huh? So I will leave you this one as your homework. You're going to need to find out what is N2, N3, N4, and or how to find or uh, how to arrange the matrix from the equation so that you can get N1, N2, N3, and N4. Okay. So this is your mathematics uh, skill. Huh? So I'm not going to cross-check for you. You need to cross set yourself, your, your skill. Huh? All right. So you're going to have these four equations. And all these are called shape function. Why they name as shape function? Because all of them give you the shape of how the bending happening on the structure itself or on the element itself. Okay, so these are four form. Uh, all of you already take vibration, right? Have you take vibration? Have all of you take vibration subject uh, module? Yes, I did. Okay. Who else haven't take the vibration? Or you take right? So when you take vibration, you also you will come across this uh, shape function, meaning after you vibrate at a certain frequency, uh, you will have a different shape. 
So you have a first shape, a natural frequency, shape one, shape two, shape three, and shape four. Okay, so this one you have four equation there. N1, N2, N3, and N4. Okay, so again, uh, uh, this is your homework. Uh, go and try to understand how to get N1, N2, N3, N4. So after you get N1, N2, N3, N4, um, now this is just a, a additional information. Um, this is uh, for this uh, polynomial equation. Uh, if you study about shape function uh, in mathematics uh, area, uh, there's a one scientific word for all this shape function. They call it Hermit cubic interpolation or cubic uh, split line uh, function. Okay. But anyway, uh, what is important for this module is that you know that you can derive from polynomial equation for the V and then uh, you know that uh, you can write the equation in terms of V equal to shape function times the displacement. V equal to ND. And there is a standard form already for form uh, for the beam. So this N1, N2, N3, 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 N4 is standard already. So you just need to uh, know how to, where is, how to find or where to, where, where this N1, N2, N3, N4 equation available to you. Okay. I don't expect you to memorize, but at least you should keep these four equations somewhere in your notes. Okay. They are important. Huh? They call it shape function. All right. Next, we already done the displacement function. Huh? Step number two. Huh? So step one, what you do, step one, you just write out the displacement, uh, the, the notes that you have here. You just label all the notes for beam, Normally standard already. So one point you usually usually you have F, V, M, and uh, theta, and then after that you derive the displacement function using polynomial equation, and at the end you reach a matrix form where you can write this this uh, displacement equation in a matrix form of V equal to N D, which is a very big uh, matrix. D I already give you hints already, D is V uh, pi 1, V 2, pi 2. N I also, also give you already. So N, you can arrange them in N1, N2, N3, N4. So if they if you write them out, it's a very lengthy, very long matrix. Because if you look at the N1, N2, N3, N4 shape or structure, it's very long, right? It's very long. So I, I don't want to occupy the screen, so I just write them in N1, N2, N3, N4 for your information. Okay. Next, we're going to uh, define strain over displacement and strain uh, stress over strain. So this two is step number three. So recall what is displacement uh, about. So you know that uh, strain, this is strain, this word. Strain is a deformation uh, definition. Strain means that uh, if you pull something and you get a, a change of length, for example, this is the total length. So strain definition is, or in your static or dynamic uh, class, Strain equal to delta L divided by L. Okay, it's a deformation parameter that when your structure being stretched or being compressed, the change of the original length, uh, what is the deformation happen? So you take the L over the, uh, the L over L. So in this case, you use the same principle. You just write in terms of beam because we are study about beam. So beam, the displacement you have is U u u is in x direction okay in x direction so meaning uh, if there is a strain happening on the beam itself you're going to use this equation strain equal to du over dx okay same principle that you learn in your uh, static or dynamic uh, module All right and this one u is a displacement uh, not velocity yeah uh. 
So is a uh, displacement in x direction. All right. Now, previously, uh, previous class we learned about uh, deformation. So when you there's a force on this on top of this uh, surface, this element is going to deform like the red line curve, right? So we can see that there is a uh, strain happening in the diagram here. As you can see, there's a straight line, which is or the original uh, AB. After the loading, this uh, deformation happen, uh, and the AB become the AB that you see on the diagram. So this uh, strain, this deformation is defined, uh, this small angle here, a small uh, I cannot say anger, but it's a small changes here. The small changes of uh, displacement is we can define as strain that we take we take a dv over dx over here, uh, where we can define as the rotation anger. Okay, this is uh, some of the diagram that help you. Um, so. Um, The transverse displacement you can you can write in this equation transverse displacement u uh, sorry axial displacement you convert okay this is axial displacement this you see the v v is the uh, transverse transverse okay now what mean by the word excel let's say you have a rod now and this is the axis center point of the rod this is called excel okay this direction is called excel direction so if there is a force at both ends, so this 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 object is going to deform like that. Okay, going to deform like that. So there is a displacement happening. Let's say this is the x direction. So this is u. Uh, this is the displacement in the yellow color direction in x direction. So we label as U. So that's why you can uh, relate the axle and the tran uh, transverse. Transverse is in vertical direction. When we study about beam, this is transverse V in Y direction. All right. So we link uh, axle to transverse displacement. Okay. Uh, give you 10 seconds to look at the screen, the direction, the equation that you have. Ask me if you don't understand uh, these two equations. Okay. You, you relate this equation to this diagram. All right. Y negative Y. Okay, let's test if you able to understand why. Yeah? Y negative. Brian, are you able to explain why there's a negative Y? Uh, why, why, why this uh, parameter, there's a negative sign there? Why? Uh? Brian, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah, why, why negative Y? Uh, why the, the this parameter negative y have a negative sign in front? Because of the directions. Mm, direction compared to what? what? What do you refer to? We talk about direction, so you must be referring to something, right? So what, what makes you uh, conclude or what makes you can explain why why this parameter here you can write negative y you 
you you can also you can also write this one negative y but why you, why you don't do that in this case okay why this portion you also you also can write negative y but you don't do that you can also you can also write if you want but in this case why 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 you don't write negative y? Why you don't write like this? But you write here negative y. Why there's a negative sign there? Sue, so you want to try to answer? Again, and the, the, all the information is on the screen. Eh? The answer is on the screen. So you want to try to answer why why there is a negative sign in front of your why there? Uh, because it is under the zero. On this diagram, how you see how you see zero? There is no zero there. Try to explain by looking at the, the the slides or the diagram they see on your screen. You need to mention the keyword. Absorb displacement. Why there's a negative Y there? Why why can you write a negative Y? You try to combine what Brian tried to say and uh, Sue trying to say. Uh, so just now you mentioned about zero. Where is this zero that you refer to? Oh, can you can you guide me? Uh, which diagram that you're referring to? You have uh, diagram A, diagram B, diagram C. So which diagram that you can use to explain the negative Y? Chia, you want to try to answer why you can write negative y? Why there's a negative sign here? You want you want to? Yeah, Chia, go ahead. I don't think I can explain it. Do, but do you do you, do you know? Why well, there's a uh, feedback on your mic? Do you, uh, Chia? Do you understand uh, why there's a negative sign? Not really. I guess I can see the curve at the. the <coughs> What, what can you compare uh, diagram A and diagram C? The answer is at inside the diagram A. Is it the after the formation? Do you see the relationship between A, B and C? The diagram A, B and C. A. A is the before the formation and B is after the formation. So uh -huh. C show the profile of A, B, C, D after the deformation. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, correct. So from what I see from A and B, mm -hmm. so after after it deformed, the A and the A point it just tip and goes to negative y direction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so can you see this is the center point of the element? 
center width this center point i'm not sure where, where is the center point in a in diagram a or c okay i erase this one i use different color i use green color from this point to this point there's a straight line right yeah can you see it you see a straight line yes sir. So this green line is here to here. Can you see it? Uh, where, where I'm pointing. Oh, yeah. See? It? Mm. Yeah. So where is this x, y, z axis on? This diagram at the center, right? Where is it? Okay. So this is the center. Can you compare the green color between uh, diagram A and diagram C and ex try to explain why your Y is negative? Because, yeah. So, sir, just now you mean the center point is between the... Yeah. Do you understand what is what, what where is the do you understand where is the location of x y x y z axis or not? Do you understand from diagram A? Do you know where is the where is the location of the axis? No. If I only drawing this this surface, I pull to this here. I'm drawing the green surface. I'm drawing what you see from here. This is Y. This is Z. Can you see it now? Also, the axis in the A diagram, the like the Y, the Y and Z is actually in the middle, right? Yeah, it's in the middle. Like what just I saw. Yes, from what I see, I thought it was at the bottom. Oh yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, you have I a very, you have a very as, as, as artistic uh, eye. Yeah, it, it might, yeah, you might interpret as below, but a normal one is... Uh, so it's actually in the middle. Yeah. Can you oh. relate what, what I draw on the top of the yeah. screen? Yeah. Then and, I then, know. and then the X is go into the screen. The X is go into the screen. Oh, yeah. Then I understand. Ah. So at C, because uh, this straight line... Uh, the straight line at C is actually uh, this, the straight line like parallel to this C. So hmm? the midpoint is actually in between them. So when you tilt, the bottom part will be negative wire because it's underneath the origin. Yeah, because it's below, right? Yeah. This is negative Y. You go below this axis. Brian, do you see it now? Sue? Ashma, do you see it now? Yes, sir. Brian, do you understand? It's uh, saying that it's below there. Mm. Yeah. So Bri I call that. Brian, you understand or not? You don't understand? Uh, I don't understand fully, sir. I understand the direction that it's below the middle. Who is who is uh, who is speaking now? Sue or what? Sue or Brian? Brian, sir. Okay, Brian, eh? I'm drawing this surface, huh? Can you see the yellow color surface? Yes, sir. I'm drawing on the below of the script slide here. I'm laboring one, two, three, four. One, two, 
three, four. This is the area of the yellow color things. And I'm going to erase the middle. I'm going to draw the axis now at the center. It is I mark as green color here. So this origin of your axis at, is at the center of this surface. This is your Y. If you see from this direction. If you see from the left hand side of the cube. This is your Y. Brian, you understand why I can draw at the center. The Y direction is going up. Yes, sir. What is this axis, Brian? Uh, Z. OK. Where is your X? Your X is coming up from the screen or going into the screen? The X. X axis. Start. Going coming in or going out? Coming, coming out. Okay, I'll repeat one more time. Huh? Your, your, your eyeballs is at left hand side of the cube. You're looking at the at this area. And I'm drawing the area one, two, three, four. I label one, two, three, four on the screen. You understand why? You understand Z, but it seems you don't understand the direction of X. How come the X can come up from the screen? Okay, so it's your, your eyeball. Your eyeball is looking at the at the green color area here. So like so, as your eyeball is looking at this yellow color box. If you stand here, how come the X is towards you? Oh. Your X is going in to the screen. So you are standing, you are looking at this area. How come the X can come up from the screen? Uh, I was looking at the op opposite uh, side. Do you get it now? Yes. Okay. Do you understand why negative Y? Why you can write negative Y here? Why there is a negative Y? Yes, sir. Why? Can you explain? It, because uh, the, the, the negative Y, it is uh, below the X. Hmm. So if I'm drawing the, the two dot there, I mark on my screen here. This is a, yet, a red line, do you see? And I mark this negative Y on the screen. This is go below the axis. This is negative Y because it's go, neg go below the origin here. Do you see it now? Yes. Yeah, so I hope everyone you 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 know how to look at the diagram. Huh? All right. So I, I already explained uh, the relationship between axial displacement and transverse displacement. Left hand side axial, right hand side transverse. Then you combine, uh, you know that the strain is du over dx. Uh, currently, you need to call your differentiation uh, skill. du dx means that you take this whole thing, you differentiate over dx. This whole thing, because this u is here, you differentiate over dx. You'll get double differentiation of your 
transverse displacement or vertical displacement over x squared. I hope all of you understand the, how you get this equation. Clear, any one of you? Okay, let me go a bit faster. So since you get the two equation, u equal to this one, strain equal to this one. So you're using Hooke's law. What mean by Hooke's law? You relate modulus Young or elasticity between stress and strain. Stress equal to modulus Young times strain. Recall that what you learned in the previous lecture, m, e m divided by EI equal to d square v divided by x square. You, um, from here, you substitute this one in. You rearrange the whole thing by using EM over uh, M over EI. You're going to get stress in X direction. Y X direction? Because you are using uh, DX. You are looking at the x means you differentiate over x direction. So you are you are getting the stress in x direction equal to minus m y divided by i. So this equation you learn in your dynamic class or static class when you learn about the uh, material property and Hooke's law. Okay. Next, these are the two equations that we've seen before. If you want to calculate bending moment, you use this equation. Bending moment equal to EI, you need to double differentiate the uh, transverse displacement or vertical displacement two times. Meaning this in the beam equation or in beam uh, question in the test or final exam, you will be given the V equation you'll be seeing something like 4x cubed plus 2x squared plus x plus 4. So you need to use this equation, m bending moment equal to ei double differentiate of this one. So you need to recall how to use the general equation. You need to differentiate two times. <laughs> to get this one. Okay. Then if you need to find the shear force, you need to triple differentiate this equation. Means you triple three times. Differentiate three times. Or you differentiate one more times from the moment, bending moment. Clear? how you make full use of the uh, question information. This one will be given, means there is an equation for uh, vertical displacement in polynomial form. Okay, you need to differentiate this one to get bending moment and shear force. Okay, I'm not going to cover how to do differentiation. If you are weak in differentiation, uh, you need to get help from your uh, mathematics lecturer. Okay, I'm going to wait. Uh, okay. Okay, I think. Can we go for a few more slides before we end for the day? All right. All right. So the next one, after you get the M, the mo bending moment, shear force, um, the U, and the former, this one, the shape function just now, the loss of equation. So you're going to link this one in a very big uh, matrix. We call it a uh, stiffer matrix. So first, we're going to use uh, how we derive the stiffer matrix. First, Recall equilibrium, the keyword is equilibrium, means all the, everything you have, either is force, moment, equals zero. Okay. 
equilibrium link with force and moment, but don't mistakenly link with displacement. Eh? It doesn't it doesn't uh, relate with displacement. Displacement always there is a, a value there unless it's mount to the wall. Then you don't have displacement. Okay. So uh, if you look at the diagram over here, it means that uh, we you already seen this diagram in your first class for BIM. Okay, so you, you need to always balance the diagram. Uh, and the direction already mentioned, the direction of the moment and the bending is always anticlockwise positive for moment and the angle. And these two, Force and displacement here is according to reference axis. Okay, uh, so we need to be careful. So for example, the one that you see on the screen here, the M here is clockwise, so it's negative sign on this this point one. This one M anticlockwise is positive when you add point two. You, you can see the displacement V here, displacement V here is positive because it's follow the Y axis. Point two displacement here, V is going down, so it's negative <laughs> sign for V. So we're going to, uh, if you compare side by side, V one Y equal to V, so recall, the equation just now because why just now I asked you to memorize shear force equal to capital V equal to triple differentiation of the uh, transverse displacement so you just copy this one put in F1 F1 y equal to shear force this is force huh? capital V is force huh? shear force and equal to this one. And as you can see from the slides, right? As you can see from the slides, I put zero here. Straight away, you know, this is X equals zero, which is referred to point one. Or from notation, F1Y means <coughs> Then recall, after you differentiate the V equation that we derived just now, the V that we give on you, the polynomial equation, and you substitute the zero, the X equal to zero, then you'll get this equation. Okay, the derivation I, I include in the slides, so uh, I, I trust you guys, you're able to understand how to get this one to here, but the steps I included in slides. Huh? So V equal to V1, you have a lengthy equation just now, the displacement equation. Then you differentiate one time, you get this one. Differentiate two times, you get this one. Differentiate three times, you get this one. So, at the end, you can write this one over here. Right. And yeah, and so on. Huh? So I just showed on this screen. You repeat the same. You do for M1. M1 equal to negative. I already explained why negative already. Equal to equation this one. Right. In previous slide, I already explained that M equal to bending moment equal to EI double differentiate of your transverse displacement or vertical displacement. So you do the same. Okay, you do the same, put in zero, you'll get this, this uh, equation. Okay, this is also your homework. Huh? Go and study these slides. Then you do the same for point two, you get the, the, the result as you see on the screen. You do for the same for M2, point two, why you should understand why this one positive. Huh? You should understand why this one negative. You get the equation that what you see on the screen. Okay. You have these four equation you put in matrix form. Like this. 
go home, study how you convert one, two, three, four, put in matrix form in F equal K D. This is your F, this is your K, this is your D. Try to understand how you put all these number together. Okay. Try to try to understand this number. Okay. And we're going to assume that the beam is long and slender. So your K matrix is what you see on the screen here. Okay. So your homework, huh? Try to understand how you convert equation to matrix. And then here to here is your K. I will stop our lecture here. So we will continue from uh, this uh, matrix equation. All right. So let me stop the recording.